you guys. Uh, actually, it does uh, make a lot of sense. Hey, there's Greg. Uh, we were just, hey, Josh. Uh, just hey, Chuck. Discussion about how things uh, work right now on uh, the hair fiber and you know how it may impact testing and things like that. Okay. Uh, just waiting for you guys. Well, let's answer Aaron. I guess he's here too. Uh, yes, he's going to be coming up. So, guys, what we'll do, um, I'm just going to bring the screen up. Can you guys see that? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, I upgraded the units yesterday as well. So here under the system, uh, was it Stefan, I think, that sent me? Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. That's our release candidate. That, that's probably what will go out as 1.5 uh, released in a few weeks. Oh, okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so, and this is where we're at. We did manage, uh, you know, actually today, uh, right off the bat, to get the units right at the 70, 74 uh, range. Uh, the flow control on the port, can we turn that on? You betcha. And what that does is send pause frames to the tool so that when uh, when we start getting overloaded, it will uh, tell the tool not to, to, not to send data until we're ready for it. Uh, typically, we do turn off the, the pause frames on other equipment. But that, you know, I'm gonna, I will leave them on, we'll run the test. Usually the result of having the pause frame on is your, your packet loss will go down, but it's hard to get a feel for what actual throughput you can get through there because what happens is the equipment's throttling you down all the time. So what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll leave all the pause frames on, we'll run that test, and maybe we'll run another test after with the pause frames on so we can compare. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, what yeah. we see with the JDSU equipment running um, link capacity here is that yeah. we're able to uh, get more throughput when we have pause frames turned on. Basically what the, what the capacity graph is doing, and it, it's, it's not exactly customer throughput, uh, the capacity graph um, is crediting us with the entire uh, payload or potential payload uh, for every OFDM symbol that we receive. And every time we decode a symbol properly, uh, we credit our capacity graph with 160 bytes. Is that the capacity graph is the, is a graph of what the RF link currently can carry. It's not necessarily an accurate indication of the throughput. Okay. And so uh, user throughput, and that, and that is because of this, uh, this this fragmentation of the packets as they come through our system. <laughs> as long as the capacity number stays where it yeah. is, it's a horizontal line. Then. Yeah. then then the okay. imbalance doesn't really bother me that much. Okay. Um, if we were aiming radios, obviously you'd want to play with it a little more. Yep. But, um... So here we are, uh, part two of the testing. We had our uh, conference call with Chuck and Aaron and Josh, and we went through all the settings. So right now we did a little bit of tweaking as per the recommendations. The uh, bottom line is the capacity line, as long as we're holding solid at 7 174 you know in both directions we should be good to go um, we got our GPS sync we got everything in a full duplex we've upgraded to the latest uh, firmware uh, everything synced up and ready to go so right now we're uh, we've started the test and everything's set up so we're gonna let that run right here we got a 210 megabits at the smaller 64 byte frames so what this could take a, an hour or so to run, so we'll just let this run. So by turning on the pause frames, just to give you an idea over here, I'm looking at the statistics on the port that we're using to generate the test traffic on. So as you can see on my receive statistics, we are receiving a truckload of pause frames. In other words, telling us to slow down. Where we're at now is uh, basically, this has been holding like a rock over here. Staying at the uh, 774 transmit receive, GPS, everything's nailed up and running pretty good. And let's just take a look. And we seem to be doing pretty good uh, for the 64, 128, 256, 512, and 1024. And then for you know, just everything seemed to drop off after that for the 1280 and 1518. Now pause frame is zero, so the config is good, and let's let that run.
Okay, so just to let you know, the uh, sun's about to set here. It's raining, drizzling. It's been a cold, hard day. We've been here for about eight hours now doing these tests. But the good thing is the radios have stayed up solid all day. As you can see, our signals are, are pretty close to being balanced. Our GPS 100%. Uh, we're staying at 744, 743. It's been like a rock all day. And we, uh, you know, we, got, we tried different tests with the pause frames on, pause frames off. Okay, so we're back in the office now and taking a look at the results from that uh, day of testing out in the cold, wet rain. And basically what's happening over here, we have the green line, which is the, uh, you know, the capacity uh, displayed in the, uh, in the Ubiquity page. And the different tests we did. So number one over here, this red line, uh, that's with pause frames off. So as we can see by this, the recommendation was to turn on the pause frames. And we can see why with the pause frames on, we pretty much overloaded the uh, the link right away. We were sending uh, 900 megs of test, and it just said can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. So you know, then we did another test where we had the pause frames on on one side. So you know, we're just sending a pause in one direction. We had some traffic come here. It actually went up quite high over here, but it totally dropped off as we got around to the 1254 uh, range. So you know, another one not recommended that you do is to have the pause frames on one side. So then we follow the complete recommendations with pause on, on both sides. And we can see over here, you know, we had a nice uh, clean ascending line around the mid range. We got pretty good throughput. Uh, still, you know, a bit away from what the capacity was, but uh, I think Chuck explained that earlier. And then we kind of drop off over here. So, you know, as you people out in the, in the community using this equipment, using the radios, having different ways of testing, we're really curious, you know, if this could be reproduced. Are you seeing the same things? Because in, in the real world, you know, a lot of this over here is going to be your, your voice over IP, right? And over here, one of these large, you're going to have your, your file transfers, right? And you're going to have video. So these areas over here where we have these, these lines that are quite low, we're trying to figure out using our, our flow, dynamic flow adjustments, you know, where do we trigger? Do we use this as the capacity? Should we use a combination of of averaging these out as a capacity and are people out in the fields you know getting these types of same results any um, any feedback would be appreciated